Welcome, Tony. Glad you could make it out today. Well, thank, thank you. you. It, uh, I'm, I'm really flattered that you asked me to do this. Well, we're going to do a lot of talking about the trash in your days. And we're going to start off first. Where, where do you come from? Where, what, what part of town? Well, I was born here in Minneapolis at Swedish Hospital, actually, uh, in 1943. It's a long time ago. Long time ago. Uh, but I've uh, lived in Minneapolis all my life. Now I, I uh, live in Plymouth, okay. Minnesota. Cool. Whatever inspired you to play an instrument or be involved with any kind of an instrument? My father was in vaudeville, and uh, he uh, was in vaudeville in the 20s. He, I've got pictures of him with Red Skelton, Jack Benny, Georgie Jessel, and those people. And uh, uh, he was uh, an entertainer and played the accordion with a guy named John Bolster, and they were known as the Jazz Twins. <laughs> and uh, so I, I had, uh, I had this desire to play something, and my aunt Marie lived with us, and she had a ukulele. That's how I started playing, and she had this ukulele, and I tuned it. I figured out how to tune it myself. We had an organ in the house, and I found the notes, and I tuned that ukulele to that organ. And I was watching TV. And on TV every day, there was a, a show called the Sunset Valley Barn Dance. I remember that. Yeah. Uh, David Stone and the Sunset, Va Sunset Valley Barn Dance. And uh, it was on every day. And there was a guitar player on that show. His name was Andy Walsh. And Andy Walsh played a Stratocaster. And uh, I watched him play. And I, I that's what I wanted to do. And when I was at a music store with my father... Uh, I decided to play the guitar when there was a guitar on a stand. I remember walking up to it. I was 10 years old, and I plucked the strings on that guitar, and that's what I wanted to do. I knew it from that point on. So you were 10 years old. When 10 you, years old. You got the bug to play the instrument. I did. Well, then how long after you've been doing that, when did you start playing with uh, trying to form a band? Well, I obviously had to learn to play the guitar, and I needed a guitar, so uh, bought a Harmony Archtop guitar for $39. And uh, 39 bucks, uh, you know, was a lot of money for me at the time. But I got, I still have that Archtop. Is that right? As a matter of fact, I still do, and it's in beautiful condition yet. It's uh, a little worn out. I played that guitar a lot. I learned how to play on that guitar, and... Uh, then I wanted an electric guitar. So I bought a K electric guitar, and it had a premier amp with it. That's what I had, and so I started uh, playing with that. And I would sit in front of the TV with the Sunset Valley Barn Dance, and I'd play with them, make sure my guitar was tuned with them. And so I started playing with them, and uh, uh, then I wanted a better guitar. So I wanted a Stratocaster, but a Stratocaster was three hundred and eighty-nine dollars. A lot of money back. A lot of money, and uh, but finally I worked enough, and we got enough money to buy that Stratocaster. And then I wanted an amplifier. I, I wanted a Fender amplifier. So my father said, "You can have that amplifier. It's two hundred and thirty-three dollars, and if you work two hundred and thirty-three hours, you can have that amplifier." So I worked 233 hours, and I got that amplifier. And so I started looking around, and I met, uh, first it was a gal up the street that played the accordion, and we started playing some shows at the school. And, uh, they were variety shows, you yeah. know. And then I was in school, uh, in high school, and we got a band together. There was a guy about three blocks away, Gene Ruffinock played the drums. His brother played the piano. I played the guitar. We found a bass player. And we had a rock band. So we started playing for pep fests at Henry High School. And uh, started learning songs. And uh, one thing leads to another. You start meeting other people, you know. And uh, our first gig that we got, I think it paid us uh, $15 that we split between us. But that was the first gig that we had, uh, and it was uh, 
on a theater worth golf course at their in their main house at their main yeah. shanty they have or whatever it is there it's chateau that's chateau. what it is a chateau and uh we played that we played uh three hours for fifteen dollars but that's how you learn yeah you learn by playing and uh well you were making your trade and trying to figure out you know how you played right yeah to figure style. it out and and then uh I started playing with a group called Jim Thaxter and the Travelers. I met Jim Thaxter. He was the leader of the band, and we started playing places like Bill's Roller Rink in Anoka, Minnesota. We started playing um, Crystal Coliseum that was in Crystal, Minnesota. And, uh, you know, one thing led to another. Uh, and uh, for some reason, Jim and I had... Uh, a difference of opinion on a song and of course musicians do do that <laughs> yeah there are differences of opinion uh, concerning a song so uh, I was out of the band and uh, after that uh, I think after the job we called them jobs not shows or gigs at that time was at Bill's Roller Rink the other guys in the band said well what's going on I said well I guess I'm out of the band so they went with me and uh, that's really how the Trashmen started. I was going to ask you that. How did the Trashmen start? And how did you find these guys and that? And how did it go? Well, uh, the fellows left over from Jim Thaxter and the Travelers, uh, we needed a bass player. So we found a bass player. His name was Don Woody. He was a great bass player and fit right in with us. So we started uh, playing some uh, school dances. Everybody danced at that time, yeah. you know. Uh, kids were dancing. So if you were, if you had 300 or 400 kids at a place, they were all dancing. And uh, so Don decided to uh, go with his brother with a group called the Star Tones. And uh, so we needed a bass player and we uh, found Bob, Bob Reed, that had moved into Minneapolis to be, uh, he wanted to be a radio DJ, and he was going to school at Brown Institute. Okay. So he came and uh, uh, played with us and fit right in, and that's how the Trashmen were formed. And so how did the name Trashmen come about? I mean, that's kind of a different name. It's different, all right. Uh, <laughs> It was particularly at the time was different. Um, we were uh, over at Don's house, Don Woody's house, and uh, we were going through singles, single records to find songs that we might do because most bands were cover bands at the time. So we ran across a record and it was called The Trashman's Blues. It was recorded by a guy named uh, Tony Kyrie. And uh, we played it, you know, and it was, Hello, Mr. Trash Man, boom, boom. And as this is playing, Steve, our drummer, said, That's what we should do. We should call ourselves the Trash Man because we were looking for a name. Mm -hmm. We had names before. We were the Star Liners, the uh, String Kings, you know. I think there was the Ultraphonics. There were all kinds of different names that we came up with. But... Uh, Steve came up with that, and we were going to play a job at a school, a school dance that Saturday. And uh, he showed up with that painted on his drum head, the Trashman, you know. And uh, it just stuck. So, so that was in the year, like, of 62? 1962. 62 is then when the Trashman really formed. It, That's it right. became that. Rock and roll since 1962. Since 1962. A lot of t-shirts were sold with that 